So typically I'd be doing this part outside on a stump. But since it's about 10 or 15 degrees out that side and my cameraman says that he doesn't work under such conditions that uh, he's shaking his head, you're right. <laughs> now, uh, then I had to move inside and makeshift something. So you can do it on the end of the shaving horse. So whenever I was talking about the tools there a minute ago, I was going to introduce some tools that, that you make yourself. Uh, one of them was the reamer and then I got sidetracked some way, which is typical for me. But uh, there's the shaving horse and then there's going to be a little small workbench and then a very, very simple uh, spring pole lathe. So all of those uh, you, can, uh, you, can, you can make yourself. Uh, so uh, anyway, the idea here <coughs> is to, so, so you've got, you got two planes here. You've got the radial plane, growth rings running this way. This is the radial plane. And then you've got the tangential plane. And that is the plane that follows the growth rings and connects with the rays on the tangent. Uh, the tangential plane is the hardest plane to cut with with the draw knife. The radial plane's a bit easier. Now, you could start out straight with your draw knife right here and get you a face to start with. Uh, but that's 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 some hard work with the draw knife, and and you can do it if your skills and or your strength are enough to do that. I'm going to go ahead and prep this surface with the hewing axe because uh, it requires a little bit less uh, power to to do it. Uh, now a hewing axe <coughs> is an axe, and you could use probably any axe here. It's just that the hewing axe is made for this. It's got a bevel on one side, so there's left-handed and right-handed hewing axes and actually they're usually interchangeable you just put the handle in this way for a left-handed one this way for a right-handed one and uh, then it's got a bevel on this side and it's almost flat on this side it's got a slight little little curve to it uh, but what that enables you to do is hold tight to the wood as you're hewing so the first thing that you're going to do is get your leg out of the way so you don't hit it with your with your axe that's not a good thing uh, and but you're going to weaken the wood by eliminating the strength of those long wood fibers and then you can you can come in I got to figure out where the edge is there it is so we're getting there you can use the hewing axe in a slicing action too. Now, I'm not really skilled with the hewing axe. I use one some, but I'm not like bow carvers and spoon carvers that use them. They use axes all the time. They might not use the hewing axe, but they're good with an axe. And for me, I just use one on occasion. So, so I got I got a little bit of skill with it, but not a lot. leaving your leg back there because you're, if you're like me and you miss those blows every once in a while you don't want to end it up in your knee okay so we're getting there just about there we got a little ring right there and if you sat down through there eh, okay a little bit more Stripes are beginning to go straight. Yeah, somebody who's really skilled with one of these things is going to grab this axe way back here for a whole lot of power. I'm afraid I'd take my finger off if I did that. I think I finally found where that edge is. Well, sort of. Come on. Okay. A little bit right here will have it. Okay. 
So now I can sight down those wood fibers and I can see that I'm pretty close to the same plane. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to lay out the shape of this of this leg. Okay. That'd be the next thing that uh, that, that I'll do. Hey. Right, so uh, I made a little just simple layout of the lines I want to hit first with this. Uh, uh, with this leg and uh, so uh, just kind of line it up in the middle and I can mark there's the one bulb and there's the other bulb because you got two bobbins with this Okay, so you might be able to see that, see that now. Now, this would be another time. Depends on if you're better with your hewing axe or better with the draw knife. That you could even take your hewing axe and you could hew those bevels fairly close and then finish up with the draw knife. Uh, with me, I'm a little better with the draw knife, although it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of another. I could do it with the with the hewing axe, but I think I'm going to jump to the to the draw knife right now and uh, cut these sides down to those lines, which will be the beginning of the of the leg. Okay, so uh, there's a lot of information out there on shaving horses. If if you don't have one. Uh, I mean, you could probably substitute something else. You could probably use some sort of a vise here if you have a vise, but it's, it's not quite as much fun and as efficient as using, using the shaving horse. Uh, but uh, but there's, a lot, there's a lot of plans out there. These, this shaving horse right here was made by Tim Manny, and uh, uh, he's got plans for sale uh, if you want to make one just like this. It's my favorite kind of shaving horse, but there's a lot of horse plans out there, a lot of them for, uh, that you download for free. And then uh, <clears throat> what goes with the shaving horse is the draw knife, kind of like peanut butter and jelly. And uh, uh, there are a lot of draw knives out there. I prefer old uh, draw knives. Uh, this is a Witherby, which is a good brand, but there's a lot of good brands, Bartons and Swans and uh, a, lot, a lot of them. Uh, this one is a bevel down knife, and I've got a video, a couple of videos on draw knives and showing how to sharpen them and explaining why one is bevel up or bevel down. Uh, in this instance, I mean, I've got 20 some draw knives, and I've got a draw knife that's larger and heavier, and it would be a roughing out draw knife here. And then I've got draw knives that are really light with really short bevels right here to getting into tight, tight. Uh, corners or, or tight radiuses. Uh, but what I was trying to do here is choose more of an all-purpose knife and that's what this one is. So uh, this one can be used for roughing out and it can be used for all, all the fine work. Uh, and uh, so, 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 so yeah, so if you're looking for just one knife to do everything, it would be one along this line, this line right here. Uh, so once again I'm working in the uh, tangential tangential plane. Uh, I'm going to uh, give myself a little mark right, right there so I can see really where that point where that point is. There we go. Uh, so with the draw knife you can you can uh, take the corners off if you want to, to ease and then you come back in the middle and take another corner off. That way you aren't removing the whole entire piece at once. Uh, or you can remove it all at once. So, uh, let's see. Let's get that. 
Okay, so now I'm on my line there. Flip it over and do it on, on this side. So now you can see, yeah, I missed it a little bit right up there, but I'm right on my line running down through there. And now I'll do this side right here. So let's adjust my shaking horse. Let's get it where you can see it first. Let's put it. So you see the way I'm taking it off the corner that corner and then right off the center I like that and you can slice with it you want to use the whole blade if you're if you're removing a lot of material that's difficult you want to try to use as much a blade as possible so you would be moving the knife all the way across the piece from one end to the other at a skew uh, Okay, so now we're there. I'm going to draw out the pattern now on on this side, and I'll be right back, right back with. You. All right, so I've got it laid out on the tangential face here, and uh, and you might even be able to tell from the camera that even though this is a lot narrower and I'm taking off a lot less material, it's it's harder to cut. Uh, so another reason, I mean, you want this dead green. I mean, the, the moisture is just pouring pouring out of this, uh, and that's what you want, it's what's fun too. <clears throat> Dry woods for burning in your fireplace. that side. Okay, this side's barely making. That's okay. Even if it doesn't make completely, it's fine. Okay, now, got that done. And sit right on that point because I want to establish a nice, nice edge there. And that's what that's what the aesthetics of this chair is really all about. Are uh, edges, and you want to maintain those as much as you can. Now, okay, let me just kind of straighten this up. Well, I don't know. I don't know if I can straighten it Yeah, there you go. That's nice. That works good. Okay. So, let's get this piece back again, or this pencil back again. So this is the upper bobbin, and here's our lower one. Uh, now, right now we're going to just eyeball the center between those bobbins, like that. and. Uh, Put it 
in at an angle. And what I'm going after is an octagonal. So, so right there, I've got a flat there that I'm imagining would be one eighth of that radius right there. And then I'm coming in with the scoop and coming down to the line. And starting right on the line up here because you want a sharp edge up there. You want, again, I'll, I'll probably drive you nuts talking about holding those edges and maintaining those edges. So I got that flat a little small. The other flats look pretty good. It'll work. down the foot and I'm <clears throat> so these original sides were straight but what I'm doing now is putting in a little concavity and kind of stylizing it a bit This is a lot of fun right here. I mean, I enjoy shaping all these parts with the draw knife, but this part of taking it to the octagonal with the draw knife is uh, something I really, really enjoy. Okay, so now <clears throat> I've got my octagonal down here at the bottom and the octagonal up here at the top, which is going to be the tenon going up into the seat. And uh, I've got the bobbin established up here and the bobbin established here. But, but in this plane, you've got the bobbin established, you can see. But in this plane, it's still coming off straight there. This one's established, but this one's not. So I'm going to finish up the uh, octagonal and give this a swoop on this edge right here and I'm going to come back into here and give this just a little bit of concavity right there. So we'll do we'll do this first and that wants no lot doesn't take much to lift the chair just makes the chair lighter it lifts it lifts it up off the floor. Okay, now go up 
here. So if you pull your elbows in tight to your body, you'll get a little bit more control right here and won't be as likely to slip and hit up into here with your knife. So you can see especially my left elbow right here because I've got it skewed that way and it's actually sliding across my body. Be sure to start just perpendicular to the long wood fibers right there so you get an edge line that runs all the way around it at the same, at the same place. <clears throat> okay, so now we have the leg shaped. The posts are shaped just absolutely identical and the uh, stretchers are done the same way only the outside stretchers the right and the left stretcher just have from there to there they come straight off I like that in a swoop uh, so what will uh, so like I said I'm not going to show you how to make those this was this was enough just showing you that that technique so what we're going to do now <coughs> is uh, set all these parts over to the side and let them air dry a bit. Uh, I want to super dry the tenon to where all, moisture, all measurable moisture content is taken out of it and it's going to go into the chair super dried like that. Uh, but I don't want to put it near any heat right now uh, and I'll show you different ways of doing that when we get to the point because you could get some excessive checking and whatever and anyway, you, you really wouldn't want to move forward with assembling the chair and drying this right now anyway because what you want for that mortise is to be at about 15% moisture content and this to be, say, 5. Uh, but, uh, but this right now is running probably around 30, which is the fiber saturation point. So it needs to drop a little bit. Now being as I've tapered it and opened up all this end grain down through here, it's going to lose moisture a lot faster than it would if it was in the cylinder. And also there's a lot less likelihood of it checking, you know, and that is a, a drying check that you always see in the tangential plane because that's the edge of the rays mm -hmm. that are checking. Hold on, my wife's on the intercom, let me talk to her and I'll be right back. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. Uh, got an intercom down to the shop, important important calls. Uh, so uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's, that's it. When, when I shoot the next one, I'll show you how to uh, do the, uh, the spindles and maybe the crest rail in the same video, or maybe we'll, we'll break those up. So, uh, okay. See you next time. <clears throat>